PID, proportional, integral, derivative. Sounds confusing? It won't be at the end of this video. Hi, HVAC Control Pro. This is Eric Stromquist with Stromquist Company and Control Trends. Dot com. Hey, we've been in the business for over 60 years. We've seen a lot of temperature control loops, pressure loops. We've done a lot of tuning with controls, primarily on the industrial side, also a lot on the HVAC side. So the first thing I'll tell you is that, hey, if you can drive a car, you already know how to tune a control loop. Because you got to think about it this way. That's all you're doing. You're adjusting for speeds, and you're trying to make the car go faster or slower, depending on the conditions and the speed that you want to accomplish. Same thing with the temperature or pressure controller. Same thing with the PID loop. So I'm so excited to do this today because people on our YouTube channel have reached out in comments and asked for this. It can be very confusing. It's based on calculus. There's a lot of math involved but you don't really need to know that necessarily, especially if you're an HVAC control pro. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. So what you'll get out of this video is you'll understand the concepts of proportional, integral, and derivative. You'll know when to use them, you'll know why to use them, okay? But then, and then you'll also know how to figure out what your controller is asking for, because they all use a little bit of different vocabulary. There are different ways to do it. There's not a set formula, but if you understand the theory, then you'll be able to figure it out. All right, if you hadn't subscribed to the YouTube channel already, would appreciate if you subscribe. Hit the little alarm bell so you'll be notified because we're trying to put out an HVAC training video every day. And uh, give us a comment. All right, HVAC Control Pro. I'm so excited to do this. I've been wanting to do it for a while because PID is something that can kind of wig you out a little bit if you kind of don't know what it is. And the good news for the HVAC Controls Professional is usually it's pretty simple. Okay, there are two types of controls as we've talked about in the past. There's on-off and there's proportional. Let's use a car analogy, okay? So let's say you're trying to go to 80 miles an hour in your car, you're starting at zero. So if you're doing an on-off control, you'd hit the accelerator, and as soon as you got to 80 miles an hour, you'd turn the car off. And you'd hit the accelerator again, and you'd turn the car off. Or back all the way off, I should say. When the car kind of stopped or some point along the way when the car stopped is when you hit the accelerator again. Needless to say, that wouldn't be much of a fun ride. Okay, so that's where proportional control came in. And where we typically see proportional control in our industry is a chill water valve, a hot water valve, a variable frequency drive. It's when we're sort of modulating a little bit. So to put that in our car analogy perspective, imagine you were driving along and you wanted to get to 80 miles an hour. So you stop, you're, you're at a stop and you hit the accelerator, and then as you kind of watching the speedometer, as you sort of get close to 80 miles an hour, you begin to back off. Hopefully that when you get to 80 miles an hour, you'll be right there. But typically what happens is you either takes a long time to get there or you overshoot it. Okay, so that's proportional. Okay, so the integral control part of it is you're kind of looking at the speedometer and instead of just waiting until you get to close to 80 miles an hour, you're sort of judging the rate at which you're getting to 80 miles an hour. So instead of having the speedometer at a, a set sort of uh, uh, pressure, you're sort of using your foot up and down a little bit to try and get it right at 80 miles an hour so you don't overshoot it or you don't undershoot it and you're trying to get there as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's the I or the integral in PID. And we're going to break all these down a little bit more in detail. Okay, if we add the derivative, so now you're kind of, you're driving along, you're going 80 miles an hour, now you see a hill that's coming up, right? So now you're going to compensate for that by pushing down even more or at a quicker rate, excuse me, you're going to push down even harder to compensate for that hill. So derivative sort of looks out into the future and goes, okay, we're, we're anticipating a bigger load or whatever, so therefore, so therefore we're going to apply uh, more control signal. Okay, so let's let's break this down, guys, a little bit, and let's let's get back to sort of the basics a little bit. Okay, so let's look at what a control loop lo loop looks like. Okay, so we basically got three components to a control loop. Okay, we got our controller, all right, and that's where we're going to set a set point, which is what we're going to bias against. We're going to have our sensor over here, maybe a temperature sensor, or it could be pressure, it could be anything. That is sort of letting us know where we are, how far off we are from set point. And then if we come out on the other side, we are going to have our controlled element. We'll just use a, um, a valve, okay? And so what happens as, like if you imagine a coil, as we get farther away from set point, the valve should open more. We get closer to set point, the valve should close more. Okay, so that's a simple control loop. Okay, so you got feedback 
from the temperature sensor to the controller and this is controlling this is what we call our controller element this is our temperature sensor and they all work together okay so again if we look at proportional only control what's going to happen there is we're going to um, we're, we're going to sort of hopefully come from below where we need to be and get right around set point we're going to modulate here okay so that would be sort of straight proportional controller and we set that a couple of different ways we could set it through something called gain or proportional band every manufacturer is a little bit different I mean I wish I could tell you that there was just one set of variables that you need to use but every manufacturer does it a little bit different okay gain which is basically just adding more output uh, is defined as output over input and by increasing the gain you cause the output to move more okay that makes a lot of sense all right proportional band is another one if you've done any pneumatics at all you, you probably heard the term proportional band which is basically a hundred divided by the gain basically what it's saying is pr the percent change in the input that will result in a hundred percent change in output so sort of what does that mean well let's take a look at that okay guys so let's think about proportional band a little bit here in this way let's say we got a set point of 72 degrees and we want to do a proportional band of in this case we'll just say three excuse me we'll say six proportional band of six now different manufacturers are going to do it different ways but uh, some might be percentage some might be an actual number but essentially what that's saying if you go three degrees above in the example that I'm using you at 75 degrees would be one range and at the other end of the range it would be 69 degrees okay now depending on whether you got a heating or a cooling valve would depend on whether this is 100 percent open or 100 percent closed all right but basically what we're saying is that at 72 degrees we want the valve to be 50 percent open okay at 69 if, if this is 0 and this is 100 at 69 degrees we want this valve to be 100 percent closed okay 50 percent open and then at 75 degrees we would want the valve to be 100 percent open so in this particular case we're talking about a cooling valve all right and we're basically saying that uh, when at 72 degrees we're modulating the valve around 50 percent at 69 degrees we want that valve to be a hundred percent closed okay so that would be a zero percent output or hundred percent closed and at 75 degrees we want the valve a hundred percent open okay so that's essentially how it works uh, and then you know the good news with this is that you if it's a study process it's pretty easy to get it dialed in and you know and PID tuning is both an art and a science if you are um, dealing with industrial type things it can be really 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 tricky uh, and that's where the science can come in but for most of you guys proportional only is going to work if it's a stable process meaning that it's not changing a whole lot okay so it should just come right in dial in and get there now the challenge with proportional control can be okay and let's go back here again if your set point is 72 degrees and that's what you're trying to maintain okay so you know again your system should come up and sort of get like this and sort of balance itself out but what can happen is if you get a big upset temperature wise in the system okay and there's a rapid change what can happen sometimes is you could either be above or below depending on whether it's heated or cooling and what could happen is you could sort of stabilize at a different set point this is called offset okay so it's still you know controlling very close to a set point but it's offset itself so uh, to sort of eliminate that we add the next piece in which is integral okay okay so integral is sort of takes care of that I mean if you get a big upset in the system integral is sort of looking at it seeing how long it's taken to respond and then it's adding or subtracting from that gain to sort of allow you to sort of just dial right in and stay at the set point now in my experience in HVAC controls you can usually just get by with proportional sometimes you got to add integral you very very rarely have to add the derivative part uh, which is sort of anticipating big loads in the manufacturing and the industrial accounts we deal with a lot of times integral is a key excuse me a lot of times derivative is a key piece of it but typically for your HVAC systems P plus I is going to get it done for you 
Okay. So integral is typically um, expressed in minutes per repeat or repeat per minute. So it just depends again on the manufacturer. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to look at how long it takes it to make set point and it's going to make adjustments. The bigger the integral you set up, okay, is going to be the quicker that it's going to respond to the system. Okay. Now the down, potential downside is you might get a lot of hunting when the valve is going up and down if, if we're using the valve example. So you kind of use the integral uh, a little bit lightly. And most of the techs I know and when we've been out sort of setting stuff up will typically start with P. Okay, just and we'll watch how the system reacts. And if there's some hunting or if the load shift around, then we can gradually uh, add in integral and you just sort of have to play with it you just have to watch it to get it set up and again if you're on the HVAC control side like an HVAC control pro you are if you haven't done this already it just it takes a little bit of just fooling around with it uh, but start with proportional first watch see how your process responds to just proportional if it's if it's not responding quick enough or if it's overshooting then you add the integral in and you should be set with that so like I said with derivative it's mainly on the industrial side we have process that are changing a lot and changing very very rapidly and derivative is like the anticipation it anticipates what's going to happen and it sort of overrides the proportional and integral set, uh, proportional and integral signal to um, get things working for you all right well that's it I hope you've enjoyed it please subscribe to the channel if you have any more questions on proportional integral or derivative please reach out remember your control friends at stromquest.com are here to help you if you need any help we suck a lot of valves and a lot of actuators and I have a great online ordering platform. Be sure to go to controltrends.com and whatever you do, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you. Okay, HVAC Control Pro, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can ask in comments. If there are any particular videos you'd like for us to create for you, we're, we're glad to do that for you as well. So remember, be bold, stay in control, and subscribe to our channel.